What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and if you have the Bissell Power Force Helix, but your vacuum may not be picking up as well as it should be, or you're just wondering how to take care of it, this video is for you. I'll show you how to empty the bin, how to clean the filter, and also how to clean out the brush roll and replace the belt, as well as check for clogs. If you do all these steps and follow them during the span of time that you're supposed to, this machine should easily last you a decade. The question is, is, well, how do you do that stuff? And good news is, I have the answer right now. Now, assuming you've already figured out how to use your vacuum, you might have been using it for a little bit, and now you might be curious as to how to properly empty out the dirt. Well, the good news is, is there's a button right here on the top of the carrying handle marked empty. So right here, there's a gray button on this blue handle. Push this, and the entire bin and cycle and assembly comes off. When you want to empty this into your trash, you want to make sure to empty it before it reaches this full line, or at the very least before it reaches this gray piece that sticks out on the inside. In order to empty this, you're going to push this button right here that says release, and that'll allow you to dump it in your trash can. I highly recommend doing this outside, but you can do it inside, and if you do, do it after you just change your trash bag, so you can push this deep into your trash can and press that button, so that way the dirt doesn't travel very far, so there's less of a risk of the dust splashing back up into your face. If you do that, you should be okay. In addition to that, we've got a washable filter that you can access underneath this tab. Flip this up, and the filter's right here. It's just a basic pad, and I'll show you how to wash this in a second. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then right up here, if we open the bin again on the bottom, we can see there's this little cyclone piece on the inside. Grab that with our hand and twist it a little bit to the left. Now we can pull it out, and we can wash this in warm water, and you can wash the bin as well. All this washes out very easily, and I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. While we're here, I'll also show you how to properly check for clogs. Now, on this machine, the air path is very straightforward. It goes in through the bottom, goes up through this lower hose, through this main hose, and into the bin. So it's very self-explanatory. Whenever you put this machine together, you may have recalled that you had to twist this hose to snap it into place. So grab this hose and twist it with the upper part towards the left, and then you can pull out the hose. Then you can pull off the hose in the same way that you would should you be using the machine, which is a bit challenging with one hand. And now we've pulled off the entire hose, and we can easily check for clogs by essentially turning this completely straight and looking down into the hose and making sure you see light. You can also take a coin and drop it through, and if it drops out the other end, you know there's no clog in the hose. If there isn't a clog in the hose, you can use a broom handle to push out the obstruction from either side. So that's fairly self-explanatory, and you can even wash this if you want to, but if you do wash it, make sure this dries for at least a week, if not two weeks, because this is very easy to retain water. So definitely don't wash this if you don't have to, but it is an option. We also have a lower hose down here, which can potentially harbor clogs, so I'll show you how to remove that in the next clip whenever, we show, whenever I show you how to access the belts and the brush roll, since we'll already have a screwdriver in our hands, and we'll already be looking through that part anyways, so that's when that part will come. The next thing I'll show you to do is how to wash the filter and the bin. Here we are in a bathroom. This particular room is called a bathroom because it's a room that contains a bath. But that's not the focus at the exact moment. I'm going to show you how to wash the filter. So the filter is this little foam piece that I showed you a bit earlier. As you can see, it's got a little bit of dust on it. Now, you do, you do not have to wash it when it's this clean. This will recommends you wash it about every month, or I recommend washing it about every two or three times that you fill up the bin to the max line. Anywhere from two to five, depending on how much dust and how much pet hair is in your home. And considering the fact that you can easily pull up that tag and check it, Definitely check it very often, and when it looks dirty, definitely wash it. Again, it doesn't have to be this little bit of dirty. It can be dirtier than this. Just make sure you can actually see the filter underneath. If you can't, it's definitely time to wash it. Now, this is super simple to wash, and it's very easy. Turn on some water, put some soap on this, or degreaser if you prefer that route, but be careful if you're using chemicals, and you can very easily do this. What I like to do is I like to put a little bit of hand soap on this. Yeah, I, I did it off camera, but I squirted a little bit of this Bath & Body Works hand soap because I love Bath & Body Works, but that's not relevant. And we're going to rub this on the filter right on where the dirty spots are. Just kind of rub it in. And now that we've done that, the back side, again, on my particular filter, is not very dirty at all. We're going to turn on our faucet. 
I should clarify, you don't want it to be too hot, you don't want it to be too cold. Lukewarm to maybe slightly warm should do the trick. Don't burn yourself and don't freeze your hand off. It's not necessary. Either way, you'll get the filter clean. We're going to run it under the water. We're going to run the entire filter under the water. All sides and all edges and all corners. I mean, it's round, so it doesn't have too many corners, but you know what I mean. And we're going to squeeze it out. So we're going to do this a couple times until the water runs completely clear. And my filter is not that dirty, so it's pretty much already clean. But if you have a much dirtier filter, you have to do this for much, much longer. Now in my case, I put some soap on it, so I want to make sure all the soap residue is out of the filter. Because that soap residue can't attract more dust. Now in the case of my filter, since it wasn't that dirty in the first place, it's pretty much clean. So now what you want to do is you want to set this aside in a sunny area and make sure it dries for at least 24 if not 48 hours. One thing I also recommend is you can take a towel, I don't know if I can show this accurately on camera, but you can take a towel and squeeze it around the filter and this will actually speed up the drying process quite a bit, especially if it's a really nice soft absorbent towel which if you use fabric softener, it's probably not. But if you don't, then it should hopefully still be absorbent. And this makes a huge difference. Now at this point, most of the water's already out of the filter. So now we don't have to leave as much to the drying process. You still wanna let it dry for at least 24 hours, unless you manage to dry this completely bone dry with a towel, which if you do, still let it sit overnight. But most of the time you're gonna let the, wanna let the, excuse me, most of the time you're gonna wanna let Wow, I can't say that. Most of the time, you're going to want to let this sit out for at least 24 hours so it can dry effectively. And the nice thing about these filters is that they are super cheap. So if you don't want to be without your vacuum, you can buy another one of these for about eight bucks. And you can have one on standby to chuck in your machine while this one is drying. I highly recommend that. It's a great way to make sure you don't accidentally run your vacuum without a filter in it, or worse, with a wet filter. So definitely do that. It's only a couple bucks and it helps you with that. A lot of people neglect washing the filter in the first place, but you definitely need to do it. Otherwise you're going to be letting dust and dirt back into your air and ruining your vacuum. And ruining a $60 or even upwards of a $100 vacuum is not a very sound investment. So definitely don't do that. But let this dry for at least 24, 48 hours and you should be golden. Next, we're going to show you how to wash out the bin. Now, please excuse the very awkward angle. This bathroom is very small, so there's not a lot of room for me to actually film in, and this is the only bathroom in my house, so please forgive me. But here is our bin and cyclone assembly. As you can see, I already removed the middle chamber, which, if you didn't do that, then you would just want to twist it to the left. So, twist it to the left and pull it straight out and this can be washed along with the main bin. You wanna make sure the top is open as well. So we're just gonna wash these out super quick, very simple, just rinse it all under water. And you don't even have to do this, but it's definitely something that I recommend doing. You can also just simply wipe down the outside of the bin with a disinfecting wipe. And realistically, for most people, that's all you need to do, just so you're not touching the dust on the outside. But if you're like me and you want to keep it all nice and clean, then washing it out is a potential thing you could do. Again, not necessary, but it's something you can do. So I'll show you how to do it just in case. We're going to turn on our water. And we're just going to rinse all this under water. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera too bad. If I am, I apologize. Now this, again, I've had this machine for very little time, so this already came up relatively clean. A couple little spots, but nothing too major. And you can use soap or some sort of cleaning agent if you want to, but it's not necessary. And in my case, I'm just simply rinsing it.
So again, sorry if my arm is blocking this. It might be a little hard to see, it's quite awkward to film, but I think you get the idea at this point. I like to just fill this up with water and let it drain out. Ooh, that was fun. That's pretty much it for that. Now for this, again, I'll wipe over the entire outside and inside with a towel just to get the vast majority of the moisture out. And then at that point, letting it sit for overnight will make sure it's completely bone dry. Same story with that little cyclone piece that I grabbed earlier, as well as the filter. So you want to let all this stuff dry for at least 48 hours. And if you dried it off yourself and it's bone dry, then still let it sit overnight just in case. But that definitely helps a lot. Now again, the only parts of these you actually need to wash is the filter. But if you wanted to wash the Cyclone and the cassette and all that, then this shows you how to do that just in case you wanted to. Alright, next we'll show you how to change the belt and access the brush roll to clean out any hair, as well as address any clogs that might be in this lower hose. So for this particular machine, there is one, two, three, four, five, six Phillips head screws. Just standard basic number two Phillips head screws. And we can use those, or we can use our screwdriver to remove these. A magnetic screw tray does help, but it's not super necessary. But again, I do recommend it, although I don't seem to have one nearby. I Oh, yes, I do actually. So, magnetic screw tray, very good idea, just so you don't lose these. And a ratcheting screwdriver helps as well. Make it a little bit easier to pull out these screws. I don't recommend using a drill or an impact. It's not necessary, but you certainly can. Just be very careful and definitely don't use the impact when you're putting in screws because you could strip out the relatively weak plastic. So we're going to take out all these screws. I'm not going to skip any of this because I want to show you exactly how to do it so you're not missing any steps. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six screws are out. We can grab this base plate and pull it off. Now it is clipped on at the bottom piece, so you're gonna have to kind of pull that off. But once you do, there's your base plate. So we can set that aside. And here is our belt and our brush roller. So the brush roller should spin freely. If it does not spin freely, then you wanna take it out and make sure it spins freely outside the machine. And if it doesn't then, then you definitely need a new brush roll. So we're going to pull out a brush roll by literally just pulling it out. And again, we want to make sure it spins freely. This one does, of course, very nicely. So you want to make sure it spins nice and free. And if there's any dust on the sides, you want to get, get that off. I usually just rub it on the carpet. Again, this brush roll is not really dirty or anything. And if there's any strings or threads, as you can see, there's a couple strings right here. If there's any hair, you want to pull that off just so it doesn't bunch up around the main machine. And you want, definitely want to make sure there's no hair because if this hair gets wrapped too tightly around, it can cause the brush roller to burn. So you want to make sure this is nice, clean, and free of hair. Of course, if your vacuum has white bristles, these are going to look dirty after a while. There's not really much you can do about that. But at least the brush roll is nice and clean. Now, of course, if you've had this for a while, there's going to be a lot more hair than mine had because mine's only a couple days old. But you know how to do that. Just pull it off with your bare hands. should be simple enough. And here's your belt. Now this uses a Bissell Style 7 belt. So, sir, there's a, there's a cat off screen that you can't see. He's right here, actually. Here, here's the cat. It's a cat. Okay. So right here is the belt. Now the way to remove this is actually fairly self-explanatory. We're just going to take this belt and there's this little motor spindle that's it's like a piece of metal that you can kind of see. There's a little gap, and we're just going to twist it so that way it clears that gap. And then we pull it straight out. Super simple. So this is a Bissell Style 7. Of course, the kitten is being obnoxious. So this is a Bissell Style 7910 belt, and the part number is 3031120. But of course, you can get aftermarket ones all over the place. 
I'll link belts in the description. In fact, I'll link pretty much a lot of these parts in the description. Sir, I'm trying to do a video. You're interrupting me. He's just playing with a box. Kittens are weird. Anyways, whenever you get your new belts, you're going to want to take the belts and pinch it like this. Sir. Stop it. <laughs> Don't push the box towards me. It's fine. I'm, I'm taking the box. This is the box he was playing with. Oh! He got part of his toy stuck in it. That makes sense. Anyways. Move that out of the way. So, whenever you replace the belts, you want to make sure the writing is on the outside. And you want to pinch this. So you've got this nice little hook right here. And we're going to loop that around the motor spindle. Which you can see the little metal piece right there. We're going to loop it right around that. And that's all we have to do for that part. So we're going to pinch this. Loop it right around. And there we go, there's our belt. Now you can also clear this window out if you want to to keep it clean. And now's a good time to check for clogs in this lower hose. So there's an intake right here, and there's a hose right up here, a little small lower hose. Now this hose right up here comes off with another screw. So we're just going to remove this screw. And you want to make sure if you have if you notice any loss in performance or you notice that the machine is straining. You want to pop this hose out, and again, drop a penny through here, make sure that this doesn't have anything stuck in it, and if it does, push a broom handle through, well, mainly through this side, and you can push it right out this way, and get whatever's blocked in it unstuck. Then once you're done with that, you're going to put that hose back on, and we're going to put that same screw back in. We're going to flip our screwdriver over to the Titan side, and we're going to put that one screw back in. That holds in the lower hose. This is not the best screw setting for this. I have to grab a different one. This one might work better. Okay, so we've got that. Hi, Rocco. So now that we've got that situated, we can now grab our brush roller, nice and clean, and we're going to grab our belt. And we're going to loop this flat end where the belt rides. We're going to loop it right around, just like that. And the side that the belt actually goes on is round, so it will go in any direction. So we're just going to stretch this. If you have a brand new belt, it's going to be tight. We're going to push it right in. So it should sit in flush. And then this other side actually has a flat end that we're going to push this in. We're going to line this up on this side, and it should push right in. We're going to make sure both ends are pushed down. And we're going to turn the brush by hand a couple times to center the belt on both the motor spindle and on the brush roll. So that takes care of that. Then we're going to put on the base plate, although I am going to wash it real quick first. But we're going to put on the base plate after that. Alright, so now we're going to take our brush plate, sole plate, bottom plate, whatever you want to call this. And we're going to slap it back on. So we're going to push this on just like that. And... And we're just going to take this and push it on. Now, of course, there is that tab on the bottom that I mentioned, so make sure that's lined up. And once that's lined up, everything else should just line up into place. Super simple. And you can also slap it for good luck. No real reason to do that, but it's for good luck. And then finally, we're going to put in all the screws. Again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So we're going to go ahead and put all those in, and we should be good to go. And now your belt brush roll and any clogs you may have on this bizzle are now properly fixed. So now we can take the machine, put it in the upright position, and in case you had taken the hose off earlier, I'll show you how to put that back on, line up the tabs and little grooves and twist it slightly to the right to lock it in place, put it back on the hook up top, and push it back on to the lower hose. That part is now back together. And finally, the last thing to do is to take the bin assembly and put it back together. So we're going to open it up. We're going to grab a little cyclone piece, put this in, line it up with the notches, which we just happened to do on the first try, and twist it to the right until it clicks. Close this up. Pop open the top where the washable filter goes. Take the washable filter, shove it in there, like so. Close it up. Put it back on the machine and push it on until it clicks into place. 
there we go. Now your Abyssal Power Force Helix vacuum is all the way back together. It's free of any dirty filters, free of any broken belts, free of any tangled up brush rollers, and free of any clogs. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to consider dropping a like on it. And if there is something else that you're still struggling a little bit with, then you may want to take it to your local vacuum shop or drop a comment below and we can see what we can do about it. Of course, there's only so much I can do over the internet and without seeing the machine in person, so I might not be able to diagnose it with just a single comment, but I can at least hopefully point you in the right direction. Anyways, this is Intelltech Studios signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.